Good morning. Grace and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And welcome to Round Hill United Methodist Church for our Sunday morning virtual worship service. As you can tell, as we gather uh, for this graduation Sunday, I am not there in the sanctuary this morning. Uh, it's out of a abundance of caution that I am staying at home this morning, uh, following our own health guidelines that has been set. Uh, but rest assured that uh, I will be back soon uh, with the rest of everybody else. And that uh, I'm just thankful for the opportunity that we still have to gather for worship uh, through the technology that we have and through uh, the wonderful gifts that we have as some of our leadership uh, has been able to put this together even while I'm at home. And so I lift that up as a praise to God for our ability, even while we're at home, even while we have all of these different things that are uh, kind of thrown in together uh, as an opportunity to still come together and praise God and to celebrate uh, graduation Sunday, celebrate our graduates uh, from college, uh, from postgraduate work and from high school and for the accomplishments uh, that they have uh, for their hard work. And so uh, it's just a joy to gather with you, uh, with everyone that is able to watch. If you have not been with us, uh, you can join and, and conversations through the comments. You can hit like, you can hit heart as the ways of responding and, and being with one another during this Facebook Live. Uh, because I'm not there, there may be a little difference uh, in our style and in our worship than we normally do, um, but I appreciate and I'm thankful for uh, your patience and for uh, just being with us as we have this time of celebration still. As we prepare our hearts and our minds for this time of worship, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this graduation Sunday. We give thanks for all those in the lives of the graduates who have helped them get to the place where they are, who have lifted them up, supported them, and now we see the, the fruits of that labor. Lord, help us to celebrate uh, not only them, but of course you and the work that you have done in them and in us the ways that you continue to transform us, the ways that you continue to lead us and shape us. Let that be continual praise on our lips as we come and gather for worship this morning. As we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us continue with this time of worship as we lift up our voices, either at home singing with the praise band, and the words will be on the screen, or I can use this time as a time of prayer and reflection as you hear the song saying. So let us join in our first praise band song.
This morning's scripture comes from 1 Samuel, chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his son, sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came, meeting him, trembling and saying, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are you sons, are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him. For we will not sit down until he comes. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes, and he was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in a word of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So it's graduation season, and though it is, it's certainly one unlike any that we have ever seen. And for me, it seems that over the past decade, I hit kind of the height of my graduation season, at least in my family. You know, in the past decade, I have not only attended my own graduation, but also my sisters, my wife's, both my sister-in-law's, and even my mother-in-law's graduation. During this time, I began to participate in a new graduation pastime because as special as graduation ceremonies are, anyone who has sat through multiple of these ceremonies know and will acknowledge, well, they're long. And so I've begun to play a game during some of these graduation ceremonies called graduation bingo. And it's exactly what it sounds like. You have a bingo card of things that are typically done or typically said during a graduation ceremony, and then you cross them off hoping to get bingo. So you put an X on your bingo card when that person walks across the stage with their hands over their head. You put another X on your bingo card when a beach ball comes out and is passed across the graduates. Another X goes on your card when a speaker uses a sports analogy or uses the words future or potential, and you get ready to call out bingo when someone makes a reference to Dr. Seuss's, oh, the places you'll go. It's amazing. It almost happens in at least a third of the graduations I've been to. This Sunday, even though we aren't able to celebrate graduation Sunday in person, I still wanted to give my own graduation address. 
And while this address may be for those graduates of 2020, it is also a biblical lesson that can speak to all of us. And so, class of 2020, I want to congratulate you. To congratulate you on an extraordinary accomplishment, you have worked so hard to get to where it is that you are today. You have been blessed with the support of family, of friends, of church and community and teachers and administrators and all those who have been around you and helped you to achieve what it is that you have achieved today. I have I'm sure that you've been told countless times already that this is only the beginning of your journey. This is only the starting point. For some of you, college awaits. For some of you, it's postgraduate work. For some, there's a job that is lined up in the future. For others, it's military service. And others of you are like Elsa from Frozen 2 who are just going into the unknown at this time. For this reason, it's no wonder why Dr. Seuss's story, Oh, the Places You Go, will speak to so many of us during this graduation season. It talks about wherever you go, you'll top all the rest. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. The book speaks to us about life's adventures. It speaks to us of climbing higher and higher, of achieving greater and greater things, and being able to do it because we know we can. But this morning, I want to share with you a different story, one found in the Bible and the history of the Old Testament. To set the scene for this story, we have to recognize that it starts with this great judge and prophet Samuel, who is tasked by God for selecting a replacement king of Israel, replacing the, the miserable and unjust king Saul. And God tells Samuel to go and to pick this new king out of one of the sons of a man named Jesse, that out of all of these sons, one of them will be the next king of Israel. And so as Samuel approaches Jesse, Jesse kind of lines up all of his sons, or almost all of his sons, to be paraded in front of Samuel to, to show these great men who could be the next king of Israel. They're lined up with their chest puffed out because they are great warriors. They have accomplished great things, and each one of them is qualified to be the next king. As Samuel walks by, he notices this quality. He notices how great each of these men are, especially the eldest son, Eliab. He notices how strong, how mighty this man is. He's handsome. He's He's got everything that would make sense for him to be king. And he's the eldest, which really matters back in those days. Eliab seems to be the one who makes sense, who has all of the qualifications for king. And yet God tells Samuel that this is not it. In fact, God tells Samuel that all of these great men that are thrown in front of him are not the next king. And in fact, the next king is the only son not present, the youngest son, the lowly shepherd son, David. Why is that? Why is the story like this? Well, God tells Samuel that God doesn't see mortals, doesn't see humans the same way that we look upon each other. We look upon each other, God says, and look at outward appearances, what it is that we have to offer. But God looks on the heart. Scripture tells us God looks on the heart. So on graduation Sunday, why am I using this story as a story for my message? Well, it's because it reminds us of a truth that runs countercultural to almost every other message that we are receiving as we prepare for graduation. You have worked so hard, and you should be proud of everything that you have achieved. And as Dr. Seuss reminds you that you have multiple paths of possibilities that are laying before you, you may achieve the highest heights that are out there. You may become top of your field. You may move mountains and have honors like no other bestowed upon you. You may earn prestigious degrees. 
You may land top-notch jobs, you may even start a family, or you might not. The reality is you might not. You could have all of the skills and requirements necessary to become king and simply become a footnote as the king's brother. And for many of us, this reality is something that would devastate us. It is something that our society teaches us makes us a failure. But what our scripture reminds us is that we can be proud of what we have achieved. We can be so proud of what it is that we have done, but our achievements are not what define us. Good or bad, your GPA does not define you. Your diploma does not define you. You are more than whether you have a job and waiting or not, or whether you have been accepted to college or to postgraduate work. While the world tries to tell us that our worth is measured by our success, God reminds us that we are measured by our hearts. We are measured by our hearts. And so as you continue in this journey, and I use the word continue, not just start in this journey. As you continue in this journey from this point, don't forget your heart. In the same way that you've been over these years pouring out over textbooks and researching through the Internet and researching all the different documents so that you can gain knowledge for all the different things you need. Don't forget to use that same energy to dive into Scripture. Don't forget to study God's holy word and to find the ways in which that can transform you. Because I'll tell you something. When you read scripture, it's amazing how something that you will read today will speak to you so differently 10 years from now. It'll touch you and transform you in a way that you would never have imagined as you read it today. Continue to dive into that scripture and and be blown away by the way it speaks to you. In the same way that you gather for group projects, for social clubs and sports, continue to gather for faith. Continue to gather to be nurtured in your soul and spirit. And I know that sounds kind of strange right now as we are in a moment where we are literally worshiping virtually. But it's the reason why we go through all of these measures to still find ways to connect. That while virtually we still try to connect in the comments in our worship, while we have set up so many Zoom meetings and Zoom Bible studies and and, and virtual discussion groups and, and things that continue to connect us and challenge us in our faith and spirituality together. Because that gathering together for faith matters. And as you continue to grow in your walk with God and continue to tend to your heart, don't forget to pray. It's hard to continue to have a relationship with God if you aren't talking to God. Don't forget your prayer life. And as we do all these things to tend to our relationship with God and tend to our heart, don't also forget about your heart of service. Don't forget about your love that you have for your neighbor, for those who are in need. Many of you have had wonderful opportunities to to be in service, whether it's through the food pantry or the garden or Rise Against Hunger, and especially many of you in ASP. And I've heard from so many about how these different opportunities have been life transforming. You know, there are stories that continue to, to, to be spoken and shared of how God is at work in those moments. But what I want to encourage you is that as you continue in life, as things get busy, as you possibly get a job, possibly start a family, don't let those conversations of what was happening now, that, that heart that you had for God, those moments Don't let them become nostalgic conversations. 
Don't let them become conversations of remember when. But instead, let your heart always have that passion and service for others. Always find ways in which you can care for your neighbor so that you're not talking about that moment back in high school or back in college where you went on that trip, but you're talking about the ways in which you are at work with your neighbors today. When you do these things, when you put all of these things together, what you are actually doing is you are listening to Jesus' greatest commandment, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. As exciting or even as scary as life may be for you right now, in this moment of unknown or this moment of new beginnings, if you attend to your heart, life will be good. Now I'll say that and I, I'm not guaranteeing you that I'm not guaranteeing to you that life will be easy. That's not a promise I can make. But life will be good. It'll be good. And so as you graduate, it's not success that I wish for you. Though if success comes your way, you better believe I'll be celebrating with you. But what I wish for you is that you may never lose heart. My wish for you is that the peace of Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may go with you forever. My wish for you is that your passion and zeal for others is lifelong. My wish is that when it's all said and done, and when you get to the end of hopefully a long and full life, you are able to look back, and your looking back won't be a, recog a recollection of places that you have gone or places that you failed to go. It won't be a, a looking back at the things that you have accomplished or the things that you have left undone. But it'll be a reflection of joy on a good life. A good life. Because it was one walked with God. Congratulations, class of 2020. Amen. This time I invite us to prepare our hearts in reflection of these words as we sing our next praise song. <laughs>